What's up, y'all? Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're talking about songs. Now, I've certainly broken down the melodies for specific songs before in other videos, but I've never really talked about my philosophy for accompanying songs or, or filling in gaps and coming up with other little melodic lines and things like that uh, when playing with the singer. So that's what we're going to do today, and we're going to use the song Fields of Athenry, which hopefully you know, it's a classic. It's Everybody's played it. It, it, was, uh, it was written in the 70s. Uh, most famously recorded, I guess, by Patty Riley, arguably. Uh, that was the version that I heard and, and learned. And now my band does it. And that's the version we're going to use as an example. I'm going to show you that some of the reasons why I picked the lines that I did, some other choices that I could have made, things like that. So stick around. Tuning isn't great. It's kind of towards the end of the night. We were all a little thirsty. Not thirsty. Not thirsty. Yeah, the tuning was great. That aside, that aside, basically I'm just playing the melody, sort of. I have a couple of variations. So it's in D, so I'm not going to go through the whole song, but the basic melody. Now, that's where I do something a little bit different. At the beginning, I tend to play it down the octave, giving it somewhere to go the higher octave being a bit more loud and in your face and intense, you know, I kind of want to end on that as it gets more amped up. So the beginning, I do kind of do the octave jump thing. The real melody would go. Right, that's the basic melody doing the octaves properly. But when I do it in the beginning, plus I, I change up the melody just a little bit still in the same chords but I like to make the I like to make the instrumentals reflective of the main melody but not exactly the same thing sometimes sometimes it's good just to do exact one to one in this case this is what I went with so it's the slight difference just playing with the rhythm a little bit so that's the idea oh then it goes back into the, the first verse and I just sit out Sometimes that's the right way, is not filling every gap. Alright, so. Chorus. So. That's the line that I'm playing. Just basic third. So the main melody. That's the basic melody, so I'm playing a bit below that. And that's all I play. In that case, I just hit that note and hang back. Once they watch the small Fiddles play. Fly. So, take a break. The fiddles come in. They play a bit. I, sit, I just kind of sit out. Then I come back in. It's just sort of a little... Really, the main note is an E. As a flute whistle player, a lot of times I, I will try not to play the main melody line that's being sung, particularly if it's a, a voice that's similar in range, because they never they always just seem to conflict. Somehow fiddles and concertinas and everything else, it, it works fine. But uh, the whistle, it just seems like my brain kind of does this, like nails on a chalkboard, right? That's why I try to find something else, or at least, again, hint at the main melody, but not always play exactly that. So in this case, if the main melody is just sitting on an E, do a third around it and some sort of little walking, moving line like that. Then the main, uh, it follows the same line of the melody. Let's just back that up to. Just following the main melody. Long, simple notes sort of staying out of the way, but hopefully kind of complementing the main melody that the, the vocals are doing. Now it's 
So the field's about to make... Same idea. It's sort of just reflecting the main line, lonely around the fields of Atherin, kind of the end of the chorus, the part that, that everybody knows and everybody sings. Uh, similar, but not exactly the same. Then I think I set out. That's what I did here. There we go. So we've got fiddles, we've got other stuff. Oh yeah, that's what I do. I drink. That seems about right. But Just kind of get out of the way. Every time that comes around, I try to amplify it. So that's how I played it the first time, ending on the E. So it was up and didn't go that far. Second time, what we just heard. Building it, extending the range a little bit more. Keep that in mind because I think I did it. Hopefully, I did it again the next time around. And then we go back around to the melody. Okay, here's the thing with jumping the octave. It's cheap and easy. It's not exactly elegant. It can be overdone. Sometimes I've been guilty of that myself. This may be the case, you be the judge. Oh, yeah, the other thing is hitting that third octave. That's another one that I've started doing a bit more of, more of lately now that I'm playing in a band like this where I'm in a pub and it's loud and rowdy. That's another one that could be overdone. So the same thing, it's the, it's the line. That's where we were in the last time. So this one, I'm one, I jump the octave. And then hitting that third octave, really just, it's it's a big blast. And that's the whole point of it is, is that it's going somewhere. That would be my take on it is have have a point A and a point B. Have a, have a reason to, to change what it is you're playing, to make it more interesting or, or to, to you know sell the song, have it, have it relate to the song. That's my take. There again, I'm up the octave. So the first few times I'd play along the chorus. But it's the same line. And guess what I did? Okay. What I meant to do, huh, meant to do that, didn't exactly play it cleanly. Uh, meant to start higher than I was before, whereas usually I started on the E. That's kind of what I was going for, but I didn't exactly hit it. But again, same line, a little bit more intense, a little bit more interesting in the upper octave, perhaps. Fell back to get out of the way. Okay, that time I started down the lower octave because I would say also don't overlook that because you get a lot of power, especially on the flute from the lower octave. Not so much in the whistle, it tends to get lost. Significant difference in volume on most whistles. Some are more uniform than others. On the flute, the lower octave is extremely strong. That's that's what separates it from the other uh, similar instruments, end blown, cross blown instruments, is that really awesome low end. Use them both. So the first one kind of came off the rails, but 
same ideas I've been mentioning all along. Give it somewhere to go. Oh. Well, that wasn't bad. That's what I was trying to get before that I mangled the first time. So at least I got there eventually. Like I always heard, if you make the same mistake twice, they call it a variation. Okay, so that was a bit of fun with keys. Same line, same idea, but just kind of mixing it up with a couple of blue notes, which is where the flute comes in handy, having that, that F natural key. You can fake it on the whistle if you try. That's what I was doing there. Entirely sure what that was. There's some folks off to the side there that were having a birthday, so they were going a little bonkers, but so I may have been playing along with them. But I'm always doing the same thing. There's the gap that we kind of trade with the fiddles, so we kind of assigned spots for those. You take this spot, I'll take this spot, so we're not just 10 pounds of, in a nine pound bag. We can fill in gaps without overfilling them and not all, all doing it. Yeah, the same line. And then we just kind of fade down, right? So that's how we do this song. Certainly not the only way to play it. That's how we've landed with this thing. Uh, and those are some of the things that I like to do with it. It's not always the same. In fact, night to night, it's, it's rarely the same, which is the fun part about a song like this because it's one that's hopefully so ingrained in all of our minds that you can take a few liberties with it if you know the melody real well. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you want me to post the whole video, I'll post that to the Wendell channel. Let me know. And otherwise, I'll catch y'all in the next one. Cheers, guys.